Well, you know, it's not very often that you hear fashion and agriculture together in the same sentence. But recently, the fashion department at UGA joined forces with a local sheep farmer to provide socks for U.S. troops in the Middle East, hence the Socks for Soldiers campaign. Well, last week I was given a first-hand look at how this incredible program all came together. These are the smiles of true appreciation and gratitude. For the men and women serving overseas, something as simple as a warm pair of dry socks can go a long way during the harsh Afghan winters. But to understand the path these socks took to get to the soldiers, one must start here. I have a real heart for the military. My husband is retired. He spent a whole career in the military. We traveled with the military. It was part of my life. Uh, my children grew up as army brats. And then my youngest daughter has chosen to go in this direction. Just outside of Athens sits the sheep farm of Jan Southers and her husband, Cornell. As part of a college course marketing study, Jan sold some of her wool to a Texas State University researcher, a project that eventually led her to form a relationship with UGA Extension Specialist Sharon Gibson. It was one of those projects that just kind of came together. Here is a wool producer in Georgia. Here is a researcher who had received a research grant from USDA to look at niche marketing and wool producing. Uh, here's a cultural anthropologist who works with Cooperative Extension. We came together, we connected with students, we connected with uh, an alum of our college, and we connected with the military, and it, and it happened. It was, it was magic. Magic, maybe. But had it not been for the extreme efforts of Gordon, the students taking part in the UGA research project would never have been able to make the connection between agriculture and fashion, as well as developing an appreciation for farmers and the hard work they put forth. So it helps them understand, oh, I know the person this fiber came from. And so they're taking the fiber and through Patty Annis, and her students, they are testing them for all of these performance characteristics. So it kind of helps the students, it engages them in a way that they wouldn't be engaged otherwise, and helps them to understand, I think, the point, and it's experiential learning, and it goes outside the classroom. Most of our students think that fibers are made, you know, in some chemist laboratory or whatnot, but it takes them, like you said, to that farm in the agricultural scene, and some of our students had the opportunity to visit Jan on our farm. I mean, we saw the sheep and stuff, but then she took us back into the barn and took out raw sheep wool that had just been sheared. And literally, it's just this ball of, you know, white stuff. And then it, you know, it's dirty and sticky and, you know, just crazy to see how that is turned into these socks that are now, you know, in Afghanistan. People who are selling the goods, that are marketing the goods, need to understand the work that goes into, into it that produces it, whether it's producing wool or cotton or vegetables or the eggs that we eat in the morning or the milk I have on my cereal. It's very important that those that are selling it, those that are buying it, understand the labor and the passion that goes into producing these products. And not only has the Socks for Soldiers campaign given Sharon a sense of personal satisfaction by helping out members of our military overseas, it also inspired her to want to help others right here in the state of Georgia, our farmers. In doing this, I've become more interested in the whole idea of niche marketing for small farms. Uh, we, you know, with the farmer's market movement, uh, with uh, the small producers that are now selling directly to people at their local farmer's markets. But how do we help people like, like Jan and her husband uh, find, a, find a market for the, what they're producing? I would love to be able to do more socks for individual soldiers like this project that we did. It was really special to supply the military. We're not talking my kind of farming anymore. We're talking, and, and there are people who do that. There are people in the western part of this country who have thousands of sheep in, in their flocks and run them primarily for the wool. Um, and, it's, and it's a big business thing, and, and there's a place for that. That's not the kind of farming that I want to do. I'm not in it to produce the end product. That's not my part of it. And so having someone else to have done that and then make it available, I was really pleased with that.